Hello, Proxmox 8.3 is a blast. And after the Broadcom VMware drama, it's no surprise that more users, including myself here, are jumping chip to Proxmox. So it's about time that this channel starts making some killer Proxmox tutorials. Now, here's what we're going to be doing today. First, we'll create a bootable USB stick and install Proxmox from scratch. Then we'll get rid of those annoying subscription pop-ups for good. Next, we're going to be configuring the updates, repositories, and get Proxmox fully updated. I'll show you how to add extra disks, set up additional storage, and upload your ISOs. We'll build your first VM together, step-by-step, step, with tips on the best options to use. We're going to be learning how to create snapshots and backups. And we'll also mapping an SMB or SIFS location from your favorite NAS into Proxmox and create backups. We will do the infamous GPU pass-through and I'll show you my surprisingly simple method. Sounds good? Let's do this. Now to get started, we need to create the bootable USB stick. Here's how to do it. Head over to the Proxmox website and download the latest ISO image. Download Rufus or any other USB bootable tool Insert a USB drive into your PC, open Rufus, select the Proxmox ISO that you just downloaded, and click Start. Once the USB is ready, plug it into the system where you're installing Proxmox. Now boot from the USB and select Install Proxmox VE. And as always, accept the agreement that nobody ever reads, and proceed to the file system selection. Now, let's talk a little bit about file systems. If you have multiple drives and want redundancy, ZFS is hands down the best choice. But if like me, you are working with a single drive, well, my preference here goes to XFS. In my experience, it's significantly faster than the extended four file system, especially for handling larger files. And here guys, I won't pretend that I know all the file systems intricacies here or that I'm even an expert on file systems because I'm not, but XFS has worked a lot better for me and it's a lot faster than X4 for me. Next, Proxmox will detect your region, Set a static IP for the network configuration because as far as I'm aware, Proxmox doesn't really work with DHCP. So make sure the IP is available and not used by any other device. When you're ready, click next, sit back and well, let Proxmox just do its thing. Once the installation is complete, remove the USB drive, reboot and voila. Now, exactly like it says on the screen, Let's copy that address, including the HTTPS and the port, just like that, and copy that into a browser on whatever computer. And after that, you're gonna be greeted with something that we all love, which is to be reminded of a subscription we do not have. And although we love it so much, we're going to remove it permanently. So SSH into your Proxmox server. I use MOBA Xterm, but feel free to use any SSH client that you like. Log in with your root credentials and then navigate to the following directory. Now, before making any changes, create a backup of the proxmoxlib.js file. Now open the file in the text editor, like nano, for example. So you can do nano proxmoxlib.js. Once the file is open, we're going to hit the Ctrl and W keys to search for the line containing no valid sub. Now, when you find it, scroll down to the line that says let res equals response.result. And I want you guys to delete that line along with the next 16 lines. Until you reach the line orich underscore cmd curly bracket function. Now make sure to also delete the trailing curly bracket after the function. Trust me, I missed that one once because it's very easy to overlook, especially if you're rushing through things. Now save the file and exit nano. Then restart the Proxmox proxy service by entering the system control restart pve proxy.service. If everything went well, the subscription pop-up is gone. But if it doesn't work, no worries, just restore the backup with the MV command. And then after that, just hit the system control restart 
pveproxy.service. Now next, we'll configure the update repositories and get Proxmox fully updated. So just navigate to the data center, PVE updates repositories in the Proxmox web server. Now you'll notice the enterprise repository is enabled by default. Simply select the two enterprise repositories and choose disable. Then click on add and add the two no subscription repositories. Now I'm going with this Ceph, or Ceph Reef or whatever it's called. Then you can simply go to updates, click on refresh and update your server. Once it's done, your Proxmox server is fully updated and ready to go. All right, just a few more steps before we can start creating VMs. So next, let's add extra disks and upload some ISOs. Go to Data Center, PVE and Disks and select the disk where you want to create the storage. Then click Wipe Disk, bearing in mind that this is going to delete your entire drive, okay? Now, once completed, click on Directory and Create Directory. Now, like I said before, Personally, I like XFS as I find it faster, but you are free to choose whichever file system you like and whichever file system you're passionate about. <laughs> you will notice the new storage appearing under Data Center PVE. So choose that newly created storage, head over to ISO images and upload the ISO of your operating system of choice. Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, whatever, up to you. Now, it's time to create our very first VM. It's exciting, right? Or maybe it's not your first VM, but still exciting nevertheless. At the very top, click on Create VM. Enter your name for your virtual machine, and if you want uh, to change its ID, totally fine. One thing I also like to do is adding a few tags. I don't know why I do this, I never use them, but I just like to see the pink colors in front of my VM. Now, on the OS tab, select the ISO that you uploaded earlier, from the storage we also just configured. And for the BIOS, now over here, you might have to do some experimentation, okay? Especially if you want to do PCI pass-through with GPUs. For me, for example, I have a Gigabyte um, UEFI board, but the GPU pass-through only works with CBIOS. Believe me, I have tried. So for me, I'm leaving it as CBIOS, but you can try with UEFI first if you have a UEFI system. All right? Okay, if you want to follow along like I'm doing, that's perfectly fine as well. For the machine, you can choose Q35 because their architecture allows us to use PCI Express. Now, leave the SCSI controller as it is and tick the KIMU or KIUMU, whatever agent. Now, this agent allows Proxmox to better control your VM, shut it down correctly, get better monitoring. It's just a good thing to have. Now, hit next. The only thing uh, I do in disks is increase or decrease the size. Then on CPU, I give it as many cores as I see fit, and a good ballpark tends to be between two and six, so let's just give it four. And on the type of CPU, I choose host, because I don't intend to move VMs across clusters. Host means that you have the CPU of your host system, like for like. And it makes sense to choose a more generic one if you're moving VMs across nodes. But we're not doing that. Then for memory, just allocate whatever memory that you see fit. We can always adjust this later. Ballooning that you see there just means dynamic memory management. And you can leave this ticked. But when we do PCI pass through, we will have to untick it. Now finally, network, just leave everything as is. Confirm everything and click confirm if you're happy. And that's it. All you gotta do now is hit start and install the OS. Now, I know that this is a little bit rushed, but I might do a video in detail about this topic. And if you want more detailed videos on Proxmox, let me know in the comment section. But for now, this video is just aimed to give you just a decent overview. And if you are enjoying this overview, don't forget to subscribe and like the video as it really helps the channel to grow and so that I can make more videos for you guys. Now, one really cool thing you can do is once you have everything nicely installed, take a snapshot. That means that you can always restore your VM 
to this point in time where everything is nicely configured. It will never be as good as the moment you finished installing that operating system. Just hit snapshots, take snapshot, enter a title and a description, and then if you screw up, you can always get back here. I use this feature all the time, especially if I am about to do something that I am unsure or that I know that can potentially screw up my system. And the same can be said for backup. You can hit backup and backup the entire VM, including all the VM settings. But let me show you a cooler way to do this. And that takes us to the next point, which is mapping an SMB or SIF storage and then perform a full backup. Now, go to the data center, storage, click add and select SMB slash SIFs. In ID, you just give it a name and in server, you enter the IP followed by the username and password. If that works, you will get a pre-populated share and all you gotta do is select the correct mount location. Then on content, you select what you want to store. And for this demo, I am adding basically everything in there. What you can do is create a folder in your NAS SMB, um, you know, root like so. And then just enter the path here. Otherwise, you're gonna get a bunch of folders appearing out of nowhere in your root directory. You know, which makes things very, very messy. And that's it. Just click add and you should see your NAS share appearing under PVE. You can just do your backups from here directly into your NAS. Just click on backup, add and select a schedule. I usually leave the compression as default and the mode as snapshot and select the VM that I want to backup. Now once created, you can trigger it straight away if you want by clicking on run now. Okay, and now it's the time for the infamous GPU pass through. And I have seen a lot of people following this tutorial right here, like for like on videos and you know, everywhere else. Now, before you go down that rabbit hole, try to see if it does work without any of this. So restart your computer and go to your bias. Make sure that you have the iGPU selected. Remove it from auto mode and set it to the prefer display card. Also, if you have a monitor attached, make sure it's inserted in the iGPU. We want to leave the graphics card unassigned, basically. Then you can boot up your Proxmox, go to your VM, and simply click on add PCI device. If your GPU appears there, select the video option and tick on all functions because you want the entire IO group bundle up. Since we also selected Q35 for the machine, we can also have the option to add the PCI Express, which I always do. Now, I only use my GPU and virtual machines for machine learning development or for transcoding videos for Jellyfin. And for that, well, all I need is Linux. So I never really configured my GPU pass-through for Windows. But if that's something that you want to do, you will most likely have to follow through the entire tutorial. Now, another thing you need to pay attention is that in some cases, your pass-through might work, but then you might end up with computers that won't turn off because the VMs can't terminate properly because they can't re release the IOMMU resources. If that happens, please follow the blog, okay? The blog that everybody refers to in Reddit. And I'll put a link in the description. Luckily for me, I didn't have that problem with neither my GTX uh, 1080 or my RTX 2080. But again, you might have a GTX 1080 that needs all that kind of stuff, you know? It really depends on vendor, on chipset and architecture and a bunch of stuff. But again, I might do a more dedicated video about this topic and explain all the ins and outs of GPUs and GPU pass through. If that's something that you want, let me know in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and I see you guys soon. Take care.